Dredge Fest 2012. The, the person who looked forward to Dredge Fest uh, 2013, 14, etc. already. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, my name is Jeff. I'm co-director of the space that you're in. And um, just by way of a quick uh, introduction to where you are, um, this is a place called Studio X NYC. Uh, it's an off-campus space run by the architecture department at Columbia. Um, we basically manage a kind of a downtown uh, location for the architecture department to host events, symposia, even office work uh, that would no normally not take place at the, uh, the main campus area or subtown. And as such, we're kind of an interface between the, the general public and the architecture school, or vice versa. And um, we've been hosting a, a lot of events over the, over the last year or so since we've um, Nicola and I have been co-directors. Uh, if you are interested in Dredge Fest and some of the other things that we've been doing, um, there's a sign-up sheet in the uh, lobby that you can use to sign your email and find out what we're doing. Um, other things that we have in store, uh, we've got a lot of good lectures and whatnot coming up in October, and, um, and so on and so forth. So definitely keep in touch if, if you can. Um, so, uh, yeah, today uh, this is a, an, an event long in the making, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, many of you might have been here a couple months ago when we had three of the four um, members of UC up at the tables here. Uh, for the Dredge Research uh, Collaborative, and uh, that was a great event. Um, really kind of a broad-ranging uh, series of uh, slideshows looking at um, artificial landforms, terrestrial engineering, um, to kind of hydrological activities uh, uh, under the guise of architecture. And um, today promises to be more of the same. Um, so just by a quick introduction to, to who you're looking at, um, on my far right, the far left for you is uh, Tim Mallet. Uh, Tim is the, the founder and uh, writer of a blog uh, called Quiet Babylon, as well as a, a journalist of Wired Design. And um, he's one of the, uh, the Dredge Research uh, Collaborative. Um, the, the texting gentleman is Stephen Becker, uh, who's an architect based outside Boston, and uh, uh, was here presenting a couple months ago. Uh, and also is the co-founder of uh, Mammoth, uh, which is a really fantastic blog, if you don't know. Um, next to him is Rob Holmes. He's the other half, uh, or I guess there's kind of a, a silent third party somewhere in Mammoth who I've never met. But um, Rob is the other uh, co-author of, of Math and uh, a landscape architect down in Virginia. And then finally, Brett Milligan, um, who was not here for the previous event, but um, I'm, I'm personally excited to have met today. Uh, he runs a really fantastic blog called Free Association Design, and uh, got a, a, an award from the uh, or a grant from the Grant Foundation of Chicago to look at, um, I guess, basically uh, 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 artificial um, engineering of the uh, Cascade, the Klamath River, um, out west. So um, yeah, with no further ado, I'll throw it over to the four of them. Uh, you're in for uh, about five hours of some uh, pretty awesome uh, conversations. And it's really, really buggy. I know maybe I'm just because I'm speaking, I'm starting to sweat. But you guys get really hot. We can always uh, turn on the air conditioners in between the, in between the, uh, the panels. But for now, it might be a, little, be a little sweaty. Also, there's some empty seats. I don't know if there's anyone sitting in there. But if you don't mind um, segueing through, there are places to sit, just to let you guys in the back know. And um, so cool, thanks a lot. Thanks, Jeff, very much for that introduction, and thank everybody for coming. Um, really, really excited. We've been working on this for uh, a long time uh, today, and then the boat tour tomorrow, which should also be outstanding. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you to Columbia and City UX for hosting us. Uh, also, special thanks to uh, two of our sponsors who are here, especially Tenkata. Uh, Vicky uh, is going to be presenting some of the really you know, kind of amazing work and technology that Tenkata does uh, a little bit later this afternoon. I'm excited to hear about that. And also, uh, Arcadis, uh, and they've got a representative who is also here in this meeting today, uh, Edgar. So, big thanks to our sponsors. Uh, couldn't pull it off without them. Um, you know, we a question we got a lot when we were first starting to plan this event was, why are you guys, why are you doing this? Um, are you getting paid? Do you work for one of these companies? You know what? Why are you so interested in, in Dredge? And we started looking at this um, as, a, as a research project together. Um, we were looking for something to do. We all wanted to work together. We, we just got really into it. And I would say there are kind of three big, three big reasons that we're here and that you're all here, hopefully, and that's, you know, one bridge is just, it's just really cool, and that's not a word you hear discussed a lot around, you know, sediments and um, sediment control techniques and erosion and this whole kind of myriad group of technologies that humans have developed to do this stuff, but it's just, it's really cool, and I think you guys are going to be super convinced of that by the end of the day. Uh, it's also uh, even cooler, even more than it's cool, it's, it's super important. It, the scale of things we're talking about here is just, uh, really almost hard to comprehend. Uh, hopefully we'll kind of grapple with that. 
And the, the third point is that despite it being really super cool and super important, um, among the general public at least, and among designers, and among basically everybody who's not really deeply involved in the industry itself, there's not a lot of recognition of these things. Um, and so we thought that by putting on an event like this that brings together all these folks and uh, you know, different players in the industry and, and introduces the public and, uh, and you folks, we might start to change some of that and, and start to raise a little bit of awareness um, to all the amazing work and the, uh, you know, the interesting things that happen. So we've got a couple of panels. I won't get too into them now, but basically there's going to be three sessions. There will be breaks, I promise, in between. Um, so you'll get a chance to you know, stretch your legs and, and get drinks and all that kind of stuff. And uh, hopefully there should be some light refreshments afterward. Um, so feel free to stick around for a little bit. And uh, with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Rob and Brett to kind of kick things off. Okay, Fest NYC. I just wanted to start off and say thank you to everybody, again, particularly our, uh, our participants and for Studio X for hosting us. I'm really excited about the opportunity to do this. Um, so we're obviously going to talk about Dredge. Um, sort of this watering movement of sediments. Um, that's what we think of when we think of dredge. But um, I'd sort of like to give a preface to this, how sort of the research we've been doing for the last uh, couple of years, and sort of how we're framing this, um, sort of where we've come at it from, bringing this to a specific place um, here in New York City. Um, and that is that um, when we think of dredge, it's not just the act of dredging itself, but something that's far more expansive, um, what we have called the dredge cycle, um, which includes all these other activities related to the movement, the anthropogenic movement, um, and the displacement of sediments. Um, this is the diagram. You'll see it's over on the wall there. Um, if anybody wants to refer to it here. Uh, deforestation is part of the dredge cycle, the sort of loss of sediment in upland areas. We don't usually think of this as dredge. Ubiquitous silt fences um, on construction sites that we are. This is part of the dredge cycle, a deliberate attempt to um, slow down the flow of sediments. And so the dredge cycle, as we've drawn it here, consists basically of two parts. The sort of gravity-fed portion that you see um, to the right, and that's sort of how sediments move on their way down and our influence on them. Gravity-fed. And at the bottom of that is this pivotal moment of actually dredging. Um, what we know of as dredging typically. And then the upside, what we call forced uplift, the various ways in which we um, kind of work counter to natural forces or environmental forces, whatever you want to call them, to actually move sediments back up, the whole process we use to do that. So if we think about this in a very holistic way, um, the dredge cycle includes all of these different devices, machines, products, uh, and so forth, and it's pretty much everywhere. It's, it's a much harder to question to think about where do we not intervene or alter the flow of sedimentation. Um, within this, we think we see sort of uh, new vernaculars that we sort of take for granted in terms of moving sediment. Uh, a key point we want to hit on in the dredge cycle is the way that we see it is ever aggregating that the dredge cycle, over time, if, we keep, if you look at it through time, gets larger, and our, our role within the hydrologic and geologic cycles, as they're conventionally defined, where you don't even see humans in them, we sort of placed ourselves further and further in there and have a greater, greater effect. And one quick way to illustrate that is looking at something like the Panama Canal expansion. Right? Um, the expansion itself is this monster project, a huge, huge earthwork, earthwork effort. But um, the actual scale of, of, of that earthwork really pales when you consider about the sort of design shockwave that's causing all the way around the globe, um, which we can see here. Um, here in New York, uh, New, York is, uh, New York is actually ahead of the curve in, in um, deepening its channels to accommodate um, post Panama ships. So there's this sort of design shockwave that's happening around the planet based on one location um, on the Earth. Um, how this uh, affects our waterways. You know, we have waterways that are some places three times deeper than they were before we started dredging them. Um, how this affects cities, ports, um, this aggregating effect of this. Um, so this was sort of 
the ideas we had coming into this, and then um, specifically uh, our interest in New York City. So, so why Dredge Fest in NYC? Right, so why land um, sort of this cyclical abstraction in this particular regional context? Um, we would say that there are kind of, uh, there, there are about three um, primary characteristics that led us to New York. Um, one is that uh, New York is uh, not just an estuary, but an estuarine complex. So there's a series of estuaries um, meeting and producing this complex sedimentary and hydrological regime. Um, and then overlaid on top of that, um, you have the scale of New York as a human system. Um, so one of the largest and most populous urban systems on the planet. Um, and those two factors together um, interface to produce a particularly altered, um, a particularly polluted even, uh, harbor where there's sort of the human legacy is uh, particularly evident and particularly implicated um, in the processes of the dredge cycle. And then maybe zooming in a little bit um, towards where we are, Manhattan. Um, we can see that Manhattan itself is kind of this um, uh, topographic entity that's been constructed through um, an artificial sedimentary regime of cut, shown in browns um, on the bottom map, and fill found in, uh, in black on the bottom map. Um, and that map is from the Manhattan Project. Um, and then I guess looking at sort of the tip of Manhattan, where we are on the southern tip, and seeing the distinction between uh, sort of the 16 or 9 shape of Manhattan and uh, the current edge of Manhattan, uh, understanding the scale of shoreline change. Um, so uh, that's why New York. Um, another question um, that's appropriate would be, um, what is the sort of organization of today and what uh, is the relationship between the, these three segments that we've set up? Um, we think they kind of build on one another and so wanted to talk briefly about how it is that they build into one another and what the interrelationships between them are. Um, so this is the, uh, the New York City Soil Survey um, and extracted from the Soil Survey uh, showing only the portions of the city uh, where the soil has been classified uh, as either unclassifiable, so it's pavement buildings, or an anthracol, which is a soil generated um, through human processes. And you can see that um, pretty much all of New York falls into one of those two categories, the patches of Staten Island, Central Park, that don't fall into those categories, but um, it kind of brings home the scale of human impact or influence over sedimentary processes in New York. Um, and in particular, um, the black and the orange here are uh, areas of fill and areas of dredge. Um, so we wonder, where does that fill and dredge come from? Um, in New York, it comes from what you would call New York sediment shed, uh, which is sort of coextensive with uh, the Hudson River watershed, the Passaic River watershed, the Raritan watershed, a few smaller watersheds, um, all feeding into the town. Uh, in general, um, Accelerated erosion is fed by um, agriculture, by urbanization, by deforestation, and by mining. Um, in New York, the two that are most prevalent are agriculture, which is orange on this drawing, um, and urbanization, which is in gray on this drawing. Um, once those sediments enter the shed, or enter the harbor, um, there's then this process of dredging that occurs. Um, and so this is sort of a diagram that breaks down um, the dredging that has occurred um, through U.S. Army Corps of Engineers contracts um, from 2009 until the beginning of 2012. Um, and what you see, or one of the things you see, is that uh, there are kind of two kinds of dredging taking place. One is maintenance dredging, um, which is in gray, and the other is uh, harbor deepening dredging, which is connected to that Panama Canal expansion that Brad mentioned. Um, and that latter kind, the deepening, uh, is particularly important because it helps us to recognize that dredging is not just produced by um, accelerated sedimentation, but it's also produced or a consequence of sort of the accelerated movement of goods and materials and products along global shipping lanes. Um, it's also worth seeing uh, 
um, to sort of reinforce the geologic scale of these impacts, that although New York has this massive um, sedimentary regime in place, uh, it actually pales in comparison to the larger scale of dredging operations in the United States. So moving from our first panel of dredging the Anthropocene, we go into uh, circularity and feedback. And the basic question here is, as, as we look at just how big this all is, just where is all this stuff going? Um, where are we putting it? And um, this diagram here showing the different ways in which dredge is used um, using those same national statistics, whether it becomes wetland nourishment or uh, goes into a confined disposal unit, how we're actually dealing with the material once it's dredged. What's the West Coast thing? Those are, I believe, those are the data sets that, from which this is represented. The West Coast thing? Uh, the thing, yeah. What is that? Is it California? Yeah, there's so there's three Army Corps districts over there. There's, uh, I think, they are implicated here. Um, I think Portland, uh, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Okay. So, um, so basically, where does all this stuff go? And what we'd like to talk about in the second panel is really how um, dread as a proposition was, or how it was framed, was largely as a linear process, one of dredge and dispose, and how we moved one towards more of a circular process of how do we reuse this material? Um, what are the ways in which it can have beneficial uses? How do we think about it as a system rather than something that's just um, you know, a disposal option? Um, so we think there's all kinds of really interesting um, exploration going on there. Um, and when we say feedback, uh, we're also looking at sort of the longer historical trajectory, you know, what we were thinking about 100 years ago versus what we're doing now. Um, and this is just, again, another illustration. This is Jamaica Bay. Um, this is one of the sites we'll be going to tomorrow in the Harbor Tour. And uh, this is what it looks like today. You can see the big JFK airport in the northeastern branch of there. And then um, this is showing an overlay of all, all the area ringed by orange shows, area that was filled in. That used to largely be marsh. So huge transformation of what this used to be. And um, so by feedback, we're looking at how these things have changed, and both culturally and physically, where this is what was planned for uh, Jamaica Bay around the turn of the 20th century, where we were going to make it into a giant port. Um, this is kind of how we used to think about wetland areas, that we needed to make them productive, rather than them actually um, being something that was productive. So we've now moved into an era where we're trying to change that, where we're altering things, where we're proactively trying to um, reinstall things we lost or processes we lost and trying to put them back. So that leads into our final panel, where um, we're going to it's called Regeneration of Public Participation, where we really want to look at all of these ways in which, um, as the process of dredging has changed, and um, the ways in which we're looking at it now. And this is, we'd like to stress in this both from a, um, you know, sort of the sort of practitioner viewpoint, a lot of corporate entities, federal agencies and such, as well as um, what is the public role in all of this? Is there a public role in this? I don't think you know it's often talked about that way, but we have brought in some speakers that would be good to talk about how the public um, you know, can be engaged in what we call the dredge cycle. So um, those are the panels and the layout of it. And um, just and you probably saw on your way in, there's an exhibition on the wall and um, I noticed that that was some of what was in our presentation. So there's some of our work in there as well as two other people who contributed. Um, Seth Denson, who uh, who couldn't be here today, and uh, Gina Worth, who's in the audience. Here. Thank you very much. Um, and so, yeah, please take a look at the boards. And with that, um, we're going to start into our, our first panel.